So welcome. This is the first meeting of the, the Twitter cohort. I'm Bob Birch with the eExtension Network Literacy Community of Practice. Um, great to have you as part of the Twitter cohort. There's more than 90 people uh, signed up uh, for the cohort, so we've got a big group, which is, is going to be great because it's going to give you a, a nice number of people to get connected with right away to build your Twitter network and hopefully uh, build a, a Twitter presence that's really going to be valuable uh, to you uh, in the future. Um, you've seen some of the materials already uh, in the pre-course activities. I just want to go through a few of the things that um, that you should have already done and if you haven't, if you could get those done uh, as soon as you, as you possibly can. The, the main one is to create a Twitter account if you don't already have one. Um, and uh, once you create that account, uh, you can uh, let uh, John Dorner know, and John's one of our guides, he's on the, on the call today. Um, you can let John know uh, what your Twitter username is, and that's important because we're trying to build this community, and so John is adding all of us to a list. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about lists, getting some weird things on Collaborate. I hope people can still hear me and everything. Um, and so John's adding those to a Twitter list, and that will give us a real easy way uh, for to find everyone in the Twitter cohort and for you to find everyone in the Twitter cohort and follow them. And I see some people are adding uh, their Twitter accounts in there as well and John, in the chat. That's fine. If you want to share those today, we'll try and keep up with those. Um, as we go through the meeting, and John has posted the link to the Twitter list that has all of the Twitter cohort members on it. So that's the first thing is to create your Twitter account. We'll, we'll talk more about that and answer any questions that you have about creating a Twitter account uh, today. The next thing is to uh, create an account for Hootsuite. And some of you have already done this, so um, you probably have gotten an idea of what Hootsuite is, but Hootsuite's a third-party Twitter client, it's really a social media client, uh, that allows you to manage your social media. The reason that we ask you to use a Twitter client uh, in the Twitter cohort rather than just uh, using Twitter.com, uh, what we call the native Twitter client or the Twitter website, is Hootsuite's going to allow you to manage your information flow. So if you guys have tried to do Twitter before, you're probably not surprised to hear that one of the reasons a lot of people start with Twitter and, and then don't use it anymore, um, it's sort of two ends of, ex of the spectrum. On one end is they, they don't follow enough people. They can't find value because they're not following enough people on Twitter or they're not finding the right people to, to follow uh, that are sharing information that's meaningful to them. Um, and then at the other end of the spectrum, sometimes people end up just following either the wrong or too many people, and they can't filter through all of the, the information. It's too much, and it becomes overwhelming. So those are a couple of reasons that people sort of, sort of go away from Twitter. And so the reason that we're using Hootsuite is to help you manage that flow. Um, instead of just seeing everything uh, that that everyone you follow uh, tweets uh, in Hootsuite, you'll be able to set up columns so you can follow hashtags like our Twitter cohort hashtag, or you can follow lists of people, um, and you can break down the information that way and make it much more uh, usable for yourself and, and filtered in a way that's that's going to help you. Um, so that's the other thing that you should have done is to have created your Twitter list or excuse me, created your Hootsuite account and then connected your Twitter account to that Hootsuite account. So let me pause there and see if there are any questions uh, about creating your Twitter account or having set up Hootsuite. And you can post those to the chat pod if you have questions or if you want to uh, raise your hand and let me call on you, you can use your audio. If you have a microphone hooked up, in order to speak, all you have to do is click the talk button. We do have 46 people in the room, so don't everybody click the talk button and speak at once. But let me know if you if you want to use your microphone, if it's easier to ask your question that way. So did anybody have trouble or have questions about the Twitter creating the Twitter account or setting up Hootsuite?
Okay. You guys must have breezed through that. Oh, there, we've got a question. Um, so, uh, Lila, if you set it up on your iPad, my understanding is that uh, as long as you're using the same Hootsuite account, on, you can use it on a web browser, uh, on a smartphone. As long as you're connecting to that same Hootsuite account, it should uh, follow. Now, um, I'm not a heavy Hootsuite user, but some of our guides who use it more, and, and guides, feel free to jump in. Don't wait for me to call on you. Um, but uh, the, the Hootsuite uh, apps and other things might look a little bit different on your smartphone, tablet, versus your web browser or your computer. And so you might have some different features. So Lisa, I see Lisa's question about a multi-contributor Twitter account um, and Hootsuite uh, in the chat. And I did get your email, Lisa. And I sent that on to Marisa Stone, one of our guides. She knows a little bit more about Hootsuite than I do. But my understanding is you should be able to create a Hootsuite account, say, with your own personal email address. Instead of creating the account with your Twitter account, your multi-contributor Twitter account, create it you know, just with your own login, and then you should be able to add in your multi-contributor Twitter account to Hootsuite. Now, if that's what you did and you're having trouble, I apologize, but that, that's my understanding of that. And anyone else, please jump in. So John, John, do you want to turn on your microphone and talk about that if I've misled people? that the, stream, the streams are different in different devices? Yeah, I'm looking at my Hootsuite on my cell phone, and I'm not seeing the, the uh, streams that I've added on, the, uh, on my desktop. So it looks like that they're two different um, accounts. So um, or it's one account, but I'll have to add the stream. So like on my desktop, I could have a search, but on my, on my um, phone, I have a... I wouldn't see that search. I'd have to go and add that search stream or that list stream to my phone. Okay, thanks, John. Sorry that I, I uh, didn't have a clear understanding of that. Um, go ahead, Victor, um, if you want to use your microphone. Yeah, actually, um, they are the same, except that if you don't log out of your um, mobile device, uh, it won't reflect any changes you've done on your desktop, so you have to log out and log back in, and then they'll show up. Oh, okay. Great, Victor. Thank you. Thank you. So Donna's saying she connected Twitter and LinkedIn. I assume you mean together, the two accounts together, uh, Donna. I was hesitant to do Facebook um, because you use it mainly for social and personal use. Um, and that's that's fine. And we do have another question about um, about uh, connecting or disconnecting your Twitter account from your Facebook account. So maybe guides, um, I can't remember uh, off the top of my head if you if that's a Twitter setting or a Facebook setting. Um, if any of the other guides can uh, jump in um, or or go online and check that out and then get back to us with answer to that question, that'd be great. So Carrie's that would be asking a Facebook account. That'd be some you you disconnected from your Facebook account. And what um, what that's doing is you have your she's got it so when she posts them to Twitter it go, automatically appears on her Facebook account I believe, and you can have that if you want or you can separate or disconnect it. So I believe you go to your um, Facebook account and look at the connections that you have. Thanks, John. Um, so Carrie uh, Mackey, you're asking about adding your name to the Twitter cohort. Um, have you you've signed up, Carrie? If you've already registered for the Twitter cohort um, and you need to share your account, uh, you could your Twitter account, you could just post it to the chat. 
um, right now, or you can email it to John Dorner, and John has shared his email address, and he's typing in the chat right now. So let's see, we're trying to handle some of these other uh, uh, questions. Setting up a multi-contributor Twitter account for so many people in the office can contribute, Alicia, that's uh, one that everybody, I think, probably on the uh, on the Twitter cohort team has struggled with in different ways. Um, the, I guess my short answer to that is you end up using some kind of third-party application um, for, uh, in the e-extension network literacy community of practice, we share responsibility for the Alex Netlit Twitter account, and some of you may have seen that Alex Netlit is following you. That's where we, uh, that's where John created the list is under Alex Netlet's account. So we share responsibility for that. There's no way to set that up in Twitter. You can't go to twitter.com and say this is a multi-collaborator account. Um, so what you could do is you could set up an account and share the username and password with the people who you want to contribute. That can be sort of a mess because you don't know who's tweeting uh, and when. So what we do in the network literacy community of practice is we use a tool called Buffer you can find that at Buffer app, so BufferAPP.com. Um, and uh, again, we share a login for that, but that allows us to schedule tweets so we can kind of keep track. And then we also keep a shared spreadsheet calendar so we know who's tweeting when. There are some third-party apps like Hootsuite and some others that will allow you to team manage a Twitter account. Um, and, but uh, sometimes that means you have to actually subscribe to those, that you, that you can't do that. I think in Hootsuite you can't do it for free, um, but you can uh, pay for it and manage it, a Twitter account as a team that way. Um, so there, there are some options for doing that, um, but I think, I don't want to speak for anyone else, but uh, the, the easy, easiest free way is to have a have some kind of calendar where you know who's responsible when, and then use a scheduling tool like Buffer or or use Hootsuite for free so that you can schedule out the tweets. So I think I think that covers a, a good portion of the initial questions. Keep them coming. Post them to the chat. Again, uh, you can use the hand raise button if you want to use your microphone. Be happy uh, to uh, put you sort of on air so that you can ask your question as well. So you should have by now, like I said, set up your Twitter account uh, and also uh, set up Hootsuite and connected your, your Twitter account to uh, Hootsuite so that you can use that to manage it. We had a number of items that we wanted you to, uh, to review, um, including uh, the uh, keeping your account secure uh, materials that, that Twitter put out. So I hope you had a chance to do that. That's one of the things that um, uh, I think it was Victor who brought it up right away is that as we're introducing you to Twitter, if you're new to Twitter, one of the, I guess, vulnerabilities that is out there is that um, there has be there's been uh, a pretty good spate of spam <coughs> uh, direct messages. Um, and so you might get a direct message and in, in Twitter, they've just changed direct messages, but um, people can send you a direct message. Um, and now with the new policy, you can either accept that direct messages from that user or, or deny them. Um, but you used to be able to send a direct message to anybody that you were following and they were following you back. And so you might see some direct messages um, that look suspicious or should look suspicious that have links in them and people were following those links and ending up, uh, you know, getting hacked and those kinds of things um, on Twitter. So that's why we wanted you to, to check out that security information right away so that you can be aware of, of the security issues or potential issues uh, with, with Twitter and sort of be on the lookout uh, for those things. And Victor's just uh, pasted a link in the chat, my guess is that probably has to do with the DMs or the direct messages uh, I was risks that I was just talking about. Okay, so Sue's having some problems with login verification. Um, I'm not sure 
uh, I don't have an answer off the top of my head, Sue, but we'd be happy to uh, work with you. And, and maybe one of the guides has a, has a way to get around that. Um, yeah, Karen's saying that could be a browser issue, so you could try uh, use a different browser to, uh, to get through that process. OK. And Firefox, yeah, seems to work uh, with most things. Um, so sorry to lose my train of thought, uh, but as we try and answer questions, and please keep keep posting your questions to the chat. Um, we're here to answer those today and get you sort of started on the right foot. So um, the, the other materials that you should have reviewed, the uh, how to tweet uh, information, um, some of the Twitter 101, the Twitter terms, um, and uh, the blog post about anatomy, or I should say the, the content post on, on the Network Literacy e-extension site, Anatomy of a Tweet, um, as, well, as well as the hashtags, information, and the guide to Twitter lingo. So let's go there next and talk about uh, talk about any questions that you might have about the whole Twitter culture. So if you if you read anything about the Twitter cohort on the on the website on twittercohort.wordpress.com, if you read the about section, you know one of the reasons that we take this or are using this strategy to try and help you get started in Twitter is our belief that Twitter really has a culture of its own and that uh, getting immersed in that culture with some guidance is the best way to uh, really adjust to it and figure out how it works for you um, rather than just sort of jumping in uh, on your own. Now, jumping in on your own might work for some of you. It might, might work for lots of people, but it can be uh, overwhelming. So that's why we talked about, um, I wanted you to take a look at the anatomy of a tweet um, the, the Twitter lingo uh, information to uh, try and get familiar with some of those, uh, you know, some of the language of Twitter. So does anybody have questions about any of that stuff, about hashtags, um, about anything else that you're seeing on Twitter or that you read in Twitter lingo that you want some clarification on? Okay. Sounds like that stuff was pretty clear. That's good. So if you do have questions, uh, go ahead and uh, post them to the chat pod. Um, so the only way people see your tweets is if they decide to follow you. Kathy's asking. Um, you know, that's that's how you get connected with, with people's tweets. Um, you just go ahead and, and follow them. But people can see your tweets. Uh, you know, just by doing a search. Um, so if they can use Twitter search or even uh, Google search to, to search things out and be able to see your tweets. They don't have to have necessarily followed you. But by following you, they're going to have those tweets show up uh, in their Twitter feed along with the other folks that they, that they followed. So I'm just running through these, and they're coming in fast. So uh, does the app mention have several purposes? Please describe. Um, yeah, I mean, you can use an at, the at uh, prefix um, uh, signifies that that's a Twitter user that you're referring to, right? So you, it's, it precedes a Twitter user name. Uh, as a way of identifying a Twitter user in a tweet. So there might be lots of reasons to do that. Um, when you uh, use the uh, at sign and username at the, well, we call that a mention. So let me, let me just keep talking about it as a mention. When you put a mention at the very start of a tweet, um, that's a reply. You're really sending that uh, to just that Twitter user. Um, and so that is only visible to Twitter users who follow you and the person that you're mentioning. They have to follow both. If they follow just you, they're not going to see that. If they follow just the person you mentioned, they're not going to see that. Um, and they have to be following both. That's if it comes at the very beginning of the tweet with nothing in front of it. So that's one way to use a mention is to, is to use it as a reply. If someone sends a tweet, 
Uh, you can use the reply button that will uh, in Hootsuite and in Twitter.com that will put your username at the start of your tweet and then you can type your reply. So that's one use for it. Uh, the other is just to recognize somebody. So we use mentions a lot of times when we uh, cite their tweets, when we retweet them or edit and retweet their tweets. We will give credit to people by putting their names in something. And I've also seen it used uh, as a way of just sort of CCing people, and you might put a you might put CC colon and put some some usernames after that. And the reason that you would do that is if you want those people to uh, sort of be notified of of that tweet that you're sending out. Most people have their Twitter notifications set up, so I don't know if most people do, but I think it's the, it's a default setting. Um, so they would if they hadn't changed it. But when you get mentioned in a tweet you usually get notified. You can get notified by email or, or notification on your, on your mobile device, different ways that you can be notified. But um, when you get mentioned in a tweet, a lot of times you get notified. So that can be one way to use the mention is to sort of draw someone's attention uh, and uh, sort of copy them on that. So the, the chat's probably getting ahead of me with some of the, um, uh, some of the guides uh, clarifying thing clarifying things um, and guides if you have anything else to add please jump in and interrupt me here I'll take Lila's question she said uh, she asked about can you ignore a request from someone and it's not a really a request unless you've got a your profile protected it's more of a notification but yes, as uh, Victor said, you can ex you can ignore, block, or report as spam any follow requests. So, unless you are um, having your your profile protected, it's just saying you're getting notified that so and so is following you now. And that that's something that you might you might consider doing. Some people, um, you know, just say, you know what, if people are going to follow me. Um, it, this is assuming you have your account open, which I, I hope you have your account open and not private, at least for the for the duration of the Twitter cohort, it'll be a little bit easier on you um, as lots of people try and follow you and those kinds of things. Um, and for us to see your, your hashtag tweets uh, as well and to follow those, that would be great. Um, but in terms of, of when you have your account open and lots of people are following you, some of those uh, accounts that follow you are what we call bots or um, you know they're, they're auto Twitter accounts um, that might be trying to spam you with, with things that may or may not be uh, distasteful. Um, and some people say, you know what, they're just following me, there's no harm in them following me, not a big deal. And other people will go in and actually block those accounts so they, they can free you follow, freely follow you but you can go in and block them from following you as well. And in the same place that you block them, you could report them as, as spam to, to Twitter as well. Um, you know, I guess other guys can jump in here. I guess my, uh, my theory on why you might want to go in and block those is that, you know, when you have a public file on Twitter, other people can go in and see who's following you. And we actually, as you see the materials for this coming week, that's one of the things that we recommend that you could do to build your network is to go in and if you're following uh, at ND Bob or at Alex Netlet, you could go in and look at who else is following those accounts and those might be people that you might want to follow as well. So because people can see that list, some people say, you know what, I don't want these unsavory accounts or these bots on my following list, so I'm going to go ahead and block them so that they're removed. So that's, uh, that is uh, at least one reason that you might want to do that. Um, we skipped over a question from, from Lisa about uh, hashtags.org and um, I don't know if any of the guides have alternatives to hashtags.org, but if you do, uh, please uh, let folks know can't think of any right now off the top of my head. 
but we can put our heads together and uh, if we can't answer that during the meeting, we will make sure that we get that posted out in a tweet with the Twitter cohort hashtag so that you have some other options besides hashtags.org. Okay, working through the questions. Uh, I see one about from Dan Welch at 121. When reading tweets, I sometimes don't know the difference between an at mention and a hashtag. Why don't you go ahead, John, and you can talk about that. I'll chime okay. in if I have um, things to add. When you proceed, when you start with an at, that's indicating somebody's Twitter account usually. If you start with a pound sign, that's indicating a, a keyword. A lot of times, conferences will have use a hashtag so that you can add a search for that hashtag and follow everybody who tweets during that conference says, we'll use this hashtag for this conference. So North Carolina Extension is having their, their annual or state conference coming up, and they've said the hashtag for this conference is going to be 2013 NCEXT Conf. So any, any, any tweets related to that conference, you could put that in your tweet, and everybody can follow that, search for that, and follow that. Um, so that's the hashtags. There's another thought there, and I, I lost it. <laughs> I think sometimes, too, um, it can be confusing because sometimes you'll see um, a hashtag uh, that is also used as a username. So we're, we're doing this with the National E-Extension Conference, shameless plug, that's coming up in March in Sacramento. So you, know, you might want to check that out if you're interested. But we're using, uh, we have an account for the National E-Extension Conference, N-E-X-C-O-N-F, but we're also using the hashtag N-E-X-C-O-N-F. And so the difference there really is that the one with the at sign is an actual account. You can follow it, it can follow you, uh, those kinds of things. Um, the hashtag is really there as a keyword to connect the conversation so that if you want to take part in the conversation around that conference without following the actual account, um, you can just attach that hashtag. And in some of the materials, if you saw the materials about hashtags, it, in some of those materials, you know, you saw there's lots of different ways that hashtags uh, are used. Hashtags, you know, are not, uh, you don't need to register them with Twitter. They're not, they're not like accounts. They don't get created in Twitter. Um, if you put that pound sign in front of anything, boom, you've created a hashtag. Um, and that's all there is to it. And so um, hashtags can be used as sort of uh, irreverent commentary on something. Uh, they can be used, you know, um, media, uh, mass media are using hashtags as, as ways to uh, connect conversations um, around particular topics or, you know, TV shows usually seems like have a little bug on the screen that shows you, you know, the hashtag tweet about this show using this hashtag. So um, I hope that helps sort of clarify some of the differences. Um, if you have a more, if you, if that was not helpful at all, Dan, and you want to clarify your question in the chat, you can do that. I got my thought back. On that. <laughs> what um, I want to say is, um, okay. honey, I was talking to beekeepers and about Twitter, and if you do a search for honey, you're going to find a lot of things that aren't related to bees. But if you put search for pound honey, the hashtag honey, then you find things that are related to honey. So it's a way of saying this is the keyword of this of this message of this of this post. Thanks, John. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about Erin's uh, comment in the chat because I think it's a good one. Uh, she's asking about the difference between uh, communication in Facebook and Twitter. Um, and they're using both uh, professionally. Um, and really, I think it's, uh, to me, and I'll, uh, this is very personal, not, not objective in any way, shape, or form. So uh, anybody else who wants to jump in with their thoughts in the chat or, or uh, via audio, let me know. Um, but for me, it really is um, the medium is, uh, you know, sort of dictates the use or the message. Um, in, in Twitter, because of the 140 character limit, um, obviously your messages tend to be shorter. 
um, but they also tend to uh, be easier to compose on the fly. So people are tweeting a lot more from their smartphones than they might be uh, Facebooking or posting to Google Plus or something because just because of the form, um, it's it's so much easier to type a quick 140 character message and that really is why Twitter is 140 characters. Um, you, you know, you might think why did they do this? Did they pick it out of thin air? And it, it really is based on the limits that we used to have on text messaging. So we used to have uh, character limits um, on SMS or text messaging that uh, limited uh, how many characters you could send that way and so, I can't remember the exact number, sorry, you know, it's, uh, it was 150 something. And so what Twitter said, if, we, if we're going to be able to send the message and be able to attach the Twitter username and send a tweet using uh, text messaging, we're going to have to limit how long that the message can be. And so that's where the 140 characters comes from. But that really has become part of the Twitter culture and they've, re they've done a pretty good job, I think, uh, as a company of sticking to that um, and keeping that going uh, because I think it really has defined the culture of Twitter. So because you can do that on the fly, you tend to, people tend to tweet a lot more often than they might Facebook and, you know, about um, maybe things that are more minutia. And so I think it's a matter, uh, Aaron, of sort of adjusting communication uh, to fit those two cultures. Um, you know, on Facebook, people value images a lot more. Um, there's a little bit more longer form for sharing. Uh, and there's, you know, a lot more uh, capability for commenting, for people to like and comment on a post as a threaded discussion. And in Twitter, that really doesn't happen. You can use reply to sort of get some, some conversation going, a threaded discussion. But it tends to be more, uh, Twitter tends to evolve into a more open conversation. People retweet stuff, add things to the, to the tweet when they edit and retweet it and those kinds of things. Um, I don't know. I might not be very, being very clear. I don't know if I understood my own answer. So uh, any of the other guys, you guys want to jump in and talk a little bit about the difference between Facebook and Twitter? Hi, this is Sonia. Um, Sometimes, or some of the things I've been reading is um, since the parents and grandparents are on Facebook and everybody's on Facebook, I'm hearing that teenagers and young people are getting away from Facebook since that is the case and that they're heading over to Twitter. So I've heard that in some circles. And so um, some people in 4-H have um, thought about going over to Twitter to capture that audience versus being on Facebook, where the growth is mainly um, older women. Yeah, audience is definitely another one that is going to be different for any social media in terms of demographics and things like that. So I think yeah, there's definitely there's definitely a, a difference um, that I've noticed. Uh, Facebook is more the at least for Oregon State University extension, uh, we have uh, the homemaker is the main audience or gardeners in Facebook and on Twitter it's it's um, more tech people. So there is a different audience. So as I'm running through some of the other questions, I think some of them have been answered in the chat um, about ignoring a request. I think, Victor, you, you answered that in the chat. Um, so Lila, you're asking about why would I want to open that account so anybody can follow me. So. I think that's a really good question and, and I have a couple of answers and I'll see if the, any of the other guides want to add to that or a couple of different reasons I should say. Um, the number one reason I would say is is to build your network. Um, by keeping your account open, um, it's sort of that open channel uh, that people can sort of uh, tune into and I've, I've used the analogy before when I try to explain Twitter is that it's a little bit like a radio station. Um, and so it can be your public face and people can connect with it without any barriers, right? On Facebook, um, and again, Facebook is changing a little bit, but, you know, 
when we think of Facebook, the basic uh, relationship between two account holders on Facebook is a friendship, and that has to be a mutual friendship, right? I can't, I have to send you a friend request. So that's a barrier for me to connect with you. And Twitter does not have that barrier if, if you keep your account uh, open. Um, so that, you know, openness, um, you know, sort of breeds uh, that network building. Um, so people can get connected with you, sort of get to know you uh, a little bit or what you're working on, those kinds of things before, uh, maybe well before they ever uh, start any kind of face-to-face uh, -face relationship uh, with you. And many of us who are guides on this have had this conversation before about people that we uh, got to know really well on Twitter before we ever, uh, ever met face-to-face or had a chance to meet face to face. Another reason is, and this is really sort of a very functional reason, is if you want to take part in the larger conversation, um, you need to have your account open. Um, and so one example of that is something called Ag Chat. There, there are live Twitter chats. Um, Ag Chat is one that's been around for a long time. It was the first live Twitter chat that I had taken, taken part in. Um, and it's where I learned that you need to have your account open in order to, to participate in that. Because what Ag Chat is, is people who may not be following one another on Twitter having a conversation, and the way that they're, they're keeping track of that conversation is by using a common hashtag. Well, if your account's open and you post using the Twitter cohort hashtag, for instance, Anybody in the cohort or anybody else in the world could search that Twitter cohort hashtag and see your tweet. If your account is closed or private, they can't see it. Um, only the people who follow you and you've accepted as followers can see it. So it limits your ability to take part in that broader conversation. And taking part in that broader conversation is where you start to grow your network. Um, so I think it's something that you need to keep in mind. If you, if you do have your account open, you need to remember that, that anybody can follow. Um, again, we mentioned before, you can block people who are following you. But you keep that in mind, that it's a public channel. It's like broadcasting your own radio station. And you share according, accordingly um, with your comfort level with being that open. Um, but it's just it's an unbelievable opportunity uh, to connect with other people, have serendipitous connections, that relationships that you wouldn't have ever gotten if you were, uh, you know, being a gatekeeper and putting up barriers to to that connection. So that's a couple of reasons why you might think about uh, keeping your account open. Uh, other folks or guides, do you want to expound on or or disagree with that? Okay, the, the, the chat is going great. Thank you for the conversation there. Um, please uh, keep posting there. Um, I'm a little bit behind, but we'll, we'll try and catch up here. Uh, Cammy's question, is it necessary to follow back those who are following me? Nope. Um, that's another sort of uh, thing that I really like about Twitter, and that's the beauty of Twitter, is that um, I build my network. And so when people uh, in, the, in the past, when I've talked to people who uh, you know, or say I, I'm on Twitter, but you know, it, it's all a waste of time. Everything that I that I see in my Twitter feed is, you know, is you know people posting what they had for lunch and stuff like that. Um, and my response, which isn't very nice, is that's not their problem or Twitter's problem. That's your problem. Um, and I'm going to go back to that radio analogy, right? Um, Twitter accounts that you follow are like radio stations. You turn it on. If you don't like what you hear, or you consistently turn it on, you know, a couple times a day for a for a week, and you don't like what you hear, turn it off. And in Twitter, that means stop following that that person. Um, you build your network and make it useful to you. Um, and so, getting back to Cami's question, it's not necessary to follow someone back. I don't consider it. Uh, and other people might disagree with etiquette, etiquette questions, you know, we can always disagree about what proper etiquette is. I don't consider it good Twitter etiquette or necessary Twitter etiquette to follow someone back. You should follow the people 
who are providing you with the kind of information that you value or enjoy or entertains you or whatever the reason it is that, um, uh, that you're using Twitter. Guides. On the other hand, hand yeah, well, um, no, I agree with that. The only thing is that, on the other hand, you never know when one of those other followers that you don't think is, you know, someone that you're interested, they might be interested in what you have to say. So Yeah, that's you know. a great point, Victor. I, that, that's, you know, um, you know, Cammie, you asked, is it necessary? And so I sort of went on my soapbox about not being necessary, but you could get a lot of value out of it. Um, I don't, you know, I would never set it up so I just automatically followed anyone back who followed me. But when people follow me, I definitely click on their profile and say, hey, who is this? And maybe I'm interested in following them. And, and Denise, sorry, I didn't see your comment, but you did a great job of uh, actually answering that question in the chat before I even got uh, involved there. So let's see. And Denise is sharing some, some good hashtags there. So I think, I don't think I've missed anything. Help me out if I have, but I'm seeing Barb's question about is hashtag or mention included in the 140 characters? And yep, it, it is. Um, uh, as well as URLs for links. And there is some shortening uh, that you can do beforehand with URLs. Um, and that Twitter, uh, if you're posting from the Twitter client, will automatically do. I think if you're, tw if you're posting from Hootsuite too, possibly. But uh, hashtags and, and mentions definitely are included in the 140 characters. Bob, I think it might be useful if we showed how to add a stream to Hootsuite, since we want people to follow the, the hashtag Twitter cohort. Sure. Might be good to show that. Okay, are you guys uh, seeing, oh, okay, <laughs> something weird is happening. All right. Are you guys seeing my, uh, uh, Alex Netlet's Twitter account. Am I still connected? It's loading. Oh, it's still loading. Okay. You can let me know when you see it, John. I can't. I can't see the the class the meeting room right now. So. Seems like it stopped for me about halfway through. Okay. Maybe okay, having problems, and I'm getting a lockup. Okay. Oh, here we go. Now we're getting somewhere. There. Now it's working. All right. Thank you. All right. So let me open up Hootsuite here. So I'm in the I'm in a browser uh, view of Hootsuite, um, and so one of the things that, that John was talking about is adding a, a, a column for the Twitter cohort uh, hashtag. I already have that here. So you can see it here and see the tweets that are coming in with the Twitter cohort hashtag. But if I wanted to set that up, there's you know a couple different ways that, that I could do it. Um, I think that uh, for me, the easiest way is to use the quick search. The quick search is this little magnifying glass up here in the corner. If you click that, now if, you're, if you want to follow any kind of a, of a hashtag, this is a really easy way to do it. You can just come up here and search for that hashtag. And uh, you see that the, the search results are here, all the tweets that have that hashtag in it. And then I can just go down to this button here and say save as stream. And then I just connect it with the uh, right account. And uh, let's see here, here's my stream, these columns away, and I can just drag this column over where I want it. Um, just click and drag, and that will move that over. Um, and so that's, that's one way to uh, create a column. You can also do it from the add stream button here. Um, so you can say, okay, this is going to be a, a Twitter stream. Um, and I have several accounts, so I have to tell, tell what account. 
but then you can have here you can say this is home feed for that account or mentions uh, those kinds of things uh, sent tweets uh, sort of the automatic stuff and then you can also come in here and do a search um, set up a search one just like we did with the quick search uh, keyword one and then the last one here I want to make sure I mention here I don't know if you guys are are you guys seeing that pop-up window yes we see it Okay, good. Yeah. All right. Sometimes you don't see it in here. So, is the list. So there's a list tab here. So if I was going to follow a, like the Twitter cohort list for for Alex Netlet or a list that I had created in in my account, I could do that. So here I look in in my account, and um, you know here's a list of you know NDSU Ag IT people, and then I can add that as a as a stream. And you can do that with the with the list by using the URL that that John shared um, as well. So you know this uh, that's the great thing about this is it allows you to sort of manage that. So here's you know sort of the default home feed for my personal my ND Bob uh, Twitter account that can be a lot to digest. So I can I've got that uh, ability to set up these streams. Uh, you know, so if I want to monitor a particular hashtag or search term, uh, I can set up a column to do that. Um, but also, I could set up columns for lists or or other ways to sort of filter out the information, um, so that uh, I don't have to, you know, sift through so much like I would on the home feed. Um, so someone mentioned. Okay, I might I might be skipping over questions here. I'm trying to get back in the chat. Uh, I hope you guys are watching the chat. John's got a great uh, great guideline for how long tweets should be, um, leaving room for retweets and and for short edits. Um, there we go. So someone asked, how did I get my columns to narrow, narrow like that? Um, it, at least in the uh, in the browser version, it really has to do with your stream view, and that's this little slider over here. So you can see it can go from one stream to at least in on my uh, my screen resolution settings to six streams. Now that might be different. Uh, for your screen resolution and how big a monitor you have, that kind of stuff. But um, it's this little slider here of stream view that will control sort of how wide those columns are. Okay. Oh, Karen, you already answered that. Sorry. Thanks for doing that. So I think, Brad, did we answer that question about how to set up the columns? The only thing is, like you just reiterate, reiterate, the bigger the window or the bigger the screen, the more columns you can have. If you've got a low resolution monitor, you're only going to be able to get two or three um, columns. OK. All right, so we've we've just got a few minutes left. Please, if you if you have other questions that are coming to mind, go ahead and um, go ahead and share those uh, in the in the chat. A um, couple things that I want to uh, let you know about, um, and that's sort of the the plan for our coming week. And um, I just need to pull that up here. Sorry if this is making my Making stuff look weird here, but um, so remember, everything's posted at twittercohort.wordpress.com. Um, so you can uh, see stuff there. I'm going to actually stop sharing. Hopefully, I can start sharing again if we need to answer a question. But it's causing some issues with my screen here. Okay. Um, so the whole syllabus is out there, and we'll we'll have a post about what's coming up this week. Um, we're using what we're calling a flipped classroom model. So these meetings, you can expect to be basically like this. We might have a little bit of things to show you or share, but mostly we're going to be here to answer your questions and those kinds of things. A reminder that um, if you uh, 
didn't get something clarified today or, or anything like that, uh, you can uh, tweet it out using the Twitter cohort hashtag, and our guides are monitoring that. We can answer questions that way. We also have the catch-up session tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 Central, 7, 6 for Victor and, and folks out on the West Coast. Um, so it's 9 Eastern tonight. It's in the same room. You'd use the same link to get in here. And, uh, and we'll answer questions, review stuff, go over sort of the things that, that we went over today and uh, try and uh, get people caught up uh, in, the, in the cohort. The, uh, what's coming up this week is um, not currently posted to the syllabus, but it's my very next thing to do as soon as we're, as soon as we're done with our meeting here. I will post the links to uh, some videos about building your personal learning network. That's sort of the specific focus of, of the Twitter cohort in terms of, of how we're going to talk about it. I know lots, a lot of you have asked questions about um, you know, tw tweeting as an organization and, and collaborating on a Twitter account and reaching audiences, and we, we'll talk, we're happy to talk about that stuff and share our experience in those areas. But in terms of the stuff that we're preparing ahead of time, we're really talking about you building a personal network in Twitter um, and one that's going to help you learn new things and get connected with people um, to really improve uh, your your own learning, your own professional development, your own uh, enjoyment of, of Twitter as a, as a uh, social media. So we're going to talk about, we have some videos on personal learning networks and how you can start to expand your network. You might want, we're going to ask you to jump in and add a few more accounts. Now if you followed everyone in the cohort, uh, you just added a whole bunch of accounts, so you might not want to get too carried away. Uh, in terms of, of growing your network for a while until you kind of get used to, until we're through the, the cohort, you can kind of, uh, uh, you know, get your network the way you want it. But we are going to, we have just some screencasts on some ways that you can find other people besides cohort members uh, to follow on Twitter. And we're going to ask that you actually uh, do that to find, you know, five more accounts, it's not a whole lot more, uh, that will contribute to your learning network, what you want to get out of Twitter. And we'll actually, we'll have some time next time we meet to share some of that. I'd really like to have uh, Twitter cohort members uh, volunteer uh, when we get on the call next week to talk about how you found your accounts and um, why you decided to follow them and, and how it's going so far. Um, so a few other things, we're going to ask you to share your Twitter account on your online uh, profiles, maybe add it to your email signature line. Um, if you're going to commit to this, you need to start getting connected to people, and uh, that's a great way to do it. Mm -hmm. Is uh, you know share it on your uh, if you're an extension person and you have an e-extension profile, you can you can share it there, but share it on Google Plus or LinkedIn, uh, or like I said, in your email signature line, and then keep your eye on the Twitter cohort hashtag. Uh, get a get a column set up in Hootsuite if you haven't already. Uh, follow that. Interact with your, your fellow tw cohort members, tweet your questions, all of that stuff uh, through there, uh, and uh, we'll sort of get on the road uh, for this next week of the, of the Twitter cohort. Um, we'll be talking about different ways to tweet and retweet uh, on uh, Twitter and in Hootsuite uh, for the next week uh, as well. So lots of stuff to, for you guys to... Uh, consume there. Um, and again, if you have questions, you can always uh, tweet using the Twitter cohort hashtag. That's the best way to do it because then it's not just me or John or, or Victor or one of the guides getting your question. It's your network getting your question, the whole Twitter cohort. And somebody might have a better answer than uh, one of the guides do. So uh, tweet your questions out. If you do uh, need some one-on-one -on -one help, uh, please go ahead and email uh, me or uh, John or any of the of the guides on the Twitter cohort. So, last call for questions or comments from anybody. Go ahead and uh, uh, jump in if you have uh, things you want to add.
Thanks, Donna. I hope that that was the intention, was um, making sure that we can, um, you know, actually get some production instead of giving a presentation during this hour. So. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Uh, we will be looking for you uh, uh, on hashtag Twitter cohort. Um, send your Twitter username to John Dorner, uh, and we will get you added to the Twitter list. Have a great day. Send out some tweets. We'll be looking for them.